Yeah. Load it, load it, load it, load it, load it. Uh. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 This feel like the intro to the intro to the intro. This is the beginning of the info. Yeah, they want to slice. I just kicked the eighth of the Kimbo. I got this from my father. My father was popping pentos. Yeah. All right, so we are live, and I am here with my man from Into the Den. Hello, everybody. Usually we got Chris Nosek with us, but uh, today's Chris's girlfriend's birthday, and uh, we're str trying to start getting you know a few people um, with us here. And I know DK was going to join, but I don't think he can make it today. So. Um, this is what we're rolling with, and I have all the giveaway stuff here. We're going to start with that, and then we'll get into some bees talk. So we'll just do this quick. Everyone's name is here. That was in the giveaway. Two cards that are being given away right there. Doing it old school. And the old hey, Bruins. Oh, yeah. Let's see here. Bang, bang, bang. Another extra shake. And the giveaway is the David Pasternak Artifacts card and the Dazzler Jacob Lauko. So I'm going to go ahead, match it up. And Camo123 is the winner. So I believe that's Cam. I believe that's Cam. Oh, camera's all screwed up. It's flipped over. I didn't have time to really prepare today. That's my fault. Um, so I'm going to take this top cam off because I don't need that. Get rid of this here. I think I can remove it. Bam. Get him out of here. All right. So, yeah, basically... Uh, I just wanted to chop some stuff up. Um, what are you thinking, bro? How are you feeling about this season? I'm feel uh, I'm feeling like eh, okay. The the off season it was a it was very much uh very much soul crushing for someone who started watching in 2010, 2011. And two of my two of my favorite players of all time retired. But you know what? We're still going to be good. We're not going to be 65 wins good, but we're still going to be we're still going to be good. Yeah, no, for sure. I agree. I think uh, a lot of negativity after game seven, of course, because the realization that one, we had a great team. A lot of people were looking at that like they thought it was the last hurrah um, with Bergeron, Marsha and Krejci all together. Mm -hmm. I understand, but um, no, I, I agree. I, I'm, I'm not as, you know, pessimistic as some might be especially with obviously the the um surprise of a couple of these prospects that we were supposed to have the worst prospect pool ranked you know at the bottom and uh some of these kids are looking like they're they're full-time nhlers in the very near future yeah so that's what i'm uh, excited about i don't know if you've seen all the you know twitter hype and following on maddie patra Oh, I uh, oh I have. I was actually at the uh, what was it? I was actually at the uh, the Capitals game on uh, on Tuesday. I ended up getting a game talk. Uh, there you go. Hell yeah. Uh, uh, Matt Patra. Oh my god. I uh, I didn't expect. Uh, uh, I expected a. Uh, I expected something out of him. I didn't expect uh, what we've been seeing so far, and it has been the greatest. The it has been amazing seeing. Uh, seeing him, I don't want to uh, hitch my cart to him too uh, too hard, though, because I mean, we uh, all that we've seen has just been in preseason. We need to see him in in like an act uh, a, in an actual NHL uh, yeah. uh, scenario. But like him completely un uh, undressing Evgeny Kuznetsov on that uh, on that backhand goal uh, was, was oh yeah. For sure, yeah, and that's an NHLer. That's a Stanley Cup champion that he did that too. So, um, you know, that's that's impressive for sure. Uh, I'm excited to see that. I, I think uh, he's got a legitimate shot. We'll see. I think they're going to give him that nine games. That's what it seems like, at least, yeah. if not more, of course. But just listening to um, 
Montgomery last night talked to Brick. I was watching Nesson, and he um, he was he was talking highly of him. He said he wasn't comparing Patra because that's not fair, but then went on to uh, compare Patra a little bit. And what he said was his game has a little bit of Krejci and Bergeron. And for the head coach to be talking like that, man, uh, you know, that, that tells high you praise. all you really need to know. You know, that's, that's high praise. That's high praise. He, he thinks highly of them. And, you know, uh, I'm excited to see where it goes. And, and uh, tonight, I think he's on the third line. I don't know if you got a chance to see the lines for uh, tonight's game. I can probably uh, – I, uh, I think I can uh, look it up. I can just quickly pull it up right now. Uh, yeah, I believe he's with Geeky and Frederick tonight. I think he's centering Geeky and Frederick, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, uh, let's see. Come on. Yeah, I think I saw a couple people. I don't know all the lines, but I did, I did pay attention to that because tonight's the first night I think he's on the third line as opposed to the top two. I think they're yeah, just doing that. Right. To, you know, they're, they're doing that just to see – kind of you know where he's at and if he can pick up players that aren't as good as him as opposed right. to you know fit in with guys that are already good just I, I just think they're trying to measure his um you know abilities really right it's always good to have someone who can elevate a line rather than just be a compliment to it yeah exactly so especially as a center yeah and he's a young kid he's 19 it's i'm excited uh, a lot of people are as well and i know a lot of talk about Fabian Lysel. People are disappointed and starting to seem like they're writing them off. I'm not at all. Um, kid needed to develop. Yet. Yeah, I mean, he he's he's a foreign player. Last year was his first time playing in the North American style of hockey. He did right. get a major concussion. Um, right. You know, that he was bouncing back from. Kind of slowed down his development a bit, in my opinion. Um so I, I wouldn't be worried about him at all. Uh, he, he still has the skills and the talent, um, you know, t to be here once he's ready, I think. And, you know, it, it might be disappointing to him. I just hope he doesn't lose confidence and have it reflect in his game. That's my only concern. He does seem like a player that kind of – he's just very nonchalant, so he's difficult to read. But, That's uh, fair, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't remember. Know uh, what is it? I remember back in like July, I went to uh, I went to Dev Camp um, with uh, uh, was it alongside Andrew from uh from the short shift? I think I also ended yeah. up me meeting Chris there and uh, uh, Lysel in the in the non even in the non contact uh, jersey, you could uh, you could see that he was still fantastic with puck possession during like the drill work or, or like they set up four cones. You can't really you can't go outside the cones. You have and like, there's everybody skating around trying to uh, keep their puck. Yeah. Uh, Lysel was in there for like uh, for like 45, 55 seconds before uh, getting knocked out, and uh, and that uh, and that level of puck possession. Uh, and I know it's non-contact and in dev camp where uh, you're not really throwing hits unless your name is Jackson Edwards. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, that level of puck possession and and coming off a concussion like that, I think is. Yeah, I think it's still amazing. Yeah, for sure. And he's definitely a skilled player. Um, he's got, you know, excellent puck skills, like you said, um, fluent skater. So, I mean, it, it, it's it's not everyone's ready right away at the age 19, 20, 21. Right. Some of these guys, you know, take some time. Everyone develops differently. And, and I, th I think he'll be here sooner rather than later. Um, he's still getting call up this uh, this season. Yeah, and no sure. doubt in my mind that he's still well, getting call. Up yeah, season. you'll see him with a B uh, on his shirt instead of a P, in my opinion, at some point this season for sure. Yep. And um, I know there's just so much talk about you know roster and, and what's it going to be like on opening night. And I saw a big debate today that um, you know someone kind of being the devil's advocate trying to say oh well waiver you know some people aren't waiver exempt and you risk losing them if you keep a guy like uh you know maddie potts on the on the roster and in my opinion i don't care i mean i don't mind losing a guy like greer i i really don't yeah. i mean great effort you know love the story all that but he's not as good at hockey as the kid and 
he doesn't really win too many fights, even though he, he fights a lot. <laughs> Give him the Greg Campbell Award for uh, for getting into as many fights as possible. He's not going to win all of them, but uh, yeah. but like, yeah, I feel like honestly, I know we clowned on uh, on the Lucic signing a lot, but uh, but like with Lucic here, uh, it kind of makes it kind of makes career uh, a little bit redundant because you won't, because yeah. now you have uh, a fourth line enforcer that. It, like whether we like it or not, he's it, he's gonna he's probably gonna end up playing in a decent amount of game. In yeah, this season. I agree, and it it's you know it's gonna be a tough decision. If I was in that front office, I would be scratching my head on who I'm gonna you know cut, who's gonna make the roster, who's there on opening night. Uh, but it's a long season; things are gonna change. You know, we don't need to have the perfect lineup on opening night. Um, right. You know, we're going to be able to experiment this year. And, you know, I, I think we're going to see a lot of that. I think it's not going to be as cookie cutter um, throughout the whole year as it usually is with, you know, tons of people um, sticking with who they normally stick with. Like, you know, we had the perfection line that was together for a few years. We had, yeah. you know, people usually stayed with their line mates throughout the season for the most part. Obviously, fourth line is always, you know, jumbling around, but. I think there's going to be a lot of shift in experimenting and, and trial and error, um, you know, this season. I, I don't know. I know there's going to be a drop off. I don't know how big it is going to be as far as the record goes, um, but I didn't look it up. I would have to have it in front of me. I forgot the exact record last year. Um, 65, 12 and five. 65, 12 and five. So I could still see them having a 50 plus win season this year for sure. I'd say somewhere in the ballpark of like 45 to 50, uh, to 51 wins. Yeah. And, and that'll put them, that'll put them in a playoff spot. They're going to be competing. Um, right. You know, so I'm, I'm really not too worried about it um, really at all. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to just see what the lineup is, of course. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, if I had to predict, I'm, I'm going probably right between somewhere 45 to 50, I'd say like, you know, 47 wins this year or something like that. I, I, I'll, you know, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, they'll, they'll certainly be a drop off. Um, and again, people forget last year, we didn't think that they were going to do that. You know, right. Usually that's how hockey is. I mean, it's, it's one of those sports and that's why it's in my opinion, the best sport, you know, professionally to watch is just because really, almost anyone can win it. Obviously there's, you know, the, the basement dwellers like the coyotes and the sharks this year who, you know, aren't looking too great, but once you're there and in the race, I mean, anyone can, can win it. I mean, look at Florida last year, they went from almost not even making the playoffs to going on a really hot run towards the end of the regular season. To, snuck yeah, in and, to think know. that, uh, to think that Pittsburgh losing to, to Chicago and Columbus caused this cause exactly. And and those are two games that, I mean, they got to be kicking themselves. Granted, I don't think Pittsburgh would have competed quite like Florida did, but um, again, you never know. I mean, once you get in, you're in, so you can right. win it. In my opinion, any team in that playoff bracket can win and, it. I mean, it's not like that would have, that would have also been uh, like, I know Pittsburgh w probably wouldn't have been like as competitive as, as Florida because is during like the trade deadline, they you know, all of a sudden became the in the oldest team in hockey you know, based on average age. But like, could you imagine the headlines of like you know, Bergeron's last, uh, uh, like you know, if it you know, before we you know, like if we already knew that this was going to be Bergeron, that was going to be Bergeron's last uh, season. Could you imagine in the headlines of uh, of Bergeron versus Crosby uh, as uh, in round one? Oh yeah, no, that would have been that would have been electric, and that just that you brought that up. I remember um, Ty Anderson over the summer. I think it was like Mark Madden had some hot take when Bergeron retired that because he's Mark Madden's a I don't know if you know who that is. He's a Pittsburgh guy, um, gotcha. like he's like a radio guy over there in Pittsburgh or whatever. And I know him from the ball hockey world because um, he's actually tied to you know ball hockey and all that. But he he's always spitting out hot like dumb hot takes. And um, he came up with this list, and he was like Bergeron wouldn't even have been a a top three, um, you know, all time on the on the Pittsburgh Penguins roster. This and that, da da da. da. And, and when you actually go back and look at 
Pittsburgh versus Bruins during the Crosby Bergeron era in the playoffs, Bergeron's success against him was just unreal. And that just tells yeah. you how good this guy was because the, he, he ate Crosby's lunch, some of these uh, playoff series, you know, and, yeah. and it was obviously one year. I know Tuca had an incredible series against them. I think it was the conference finals in 13 where he, he gave up like two so, yeah. or three goals in the whole series. Um, but yeah, I, I thought that was funny that, um, you know, he, he was bashing Bergeron saying, oh, oh, Crosby's so much better. And obviously, you know, Crosby's better. We get that. It's what MVPs he's, you know, one heart, um, right. all that stuff. But Bergeron, when, when, when it mattered, I mean, playing against him head to head, what else can you ask for? You know, I mean, a guy, uh, guy showed up when it mattered for sure. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's something to consider too. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting seeing Marshy as the captain. How do you feel about that whole Marshy with the C? I was a little bit, uh, I was a little bit uh, iffy on it at first. I thought that, uh, yeah, I thought that uh, McAvoy uh, had a uh, had a bit of a uh, better uh, like handle of uh, handle of a uh, uh, of like a uh, stable headed leader uh, leadership, like keeping your nose clean in 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 the game. Um, but I, but the longer I thought about it, the more I realized this is this is like the logical conclusion of the uh, of the culture that uh, that Chara Bergeron and Marchand have helped to help to create. Especially because I don't think that you could say that there are very many people in the NHL that work that put in the work ethic as hard as as Brad Marchand. And yeah. so I sort of, uh, and so I sort of uh, felt that like uh, giving him the seat. Is a, a symbol to anybody, especially in this, this season where we're going to see a lot of, uh, of young talent come up. Uh, come up. Uh, it's sort of a. Uh, it's sort of a. Uh, it's sort of uh, showcasing to them, um, like if you want to wear this crest uh, with this uh, and me, uh, if you want to do this crest justice, you need to put in in the same work ethic as uh, as this man. Yeah, no, for sure. I agree. That's that was actually one thing I touched on, and I was talking about it with Chris a couple weeks ago. Is that like similar to what you're saying? I guess I said, I mean, what does it tell the younger people and really anyone that plays for the organization that if you put in all these years, dedicate all this, you know, be a cheap, um, all star caliber option and give everything you can to the organization and then when your time comes just not get rewarded with that see like what, what does that kind of say you know right. uh, to the guys like you know, like you said like if you want to wear that jersey and dedicate everything to it and he's a perfect example of someone who's done that mm -hmm. and i get some people saying you know they want to turn the page and and give it to mcavoy and new chapter but I don't think it's time for that yet i i don't i, I think as long as marshan's here he's he, he won that cup he was in that legendary Boston locker room with all these guys. Mm -hmm. who, like you said, who better to, you know, really project that on the younger generation. So McAvoy is probably getting it next, either him or Carlo. Yeah, I agree. I think it'll be, it'll be McAvoy. Carlo, I think would, would be a good option if, um, I mean, most teams, wasn't so loaded. <laughs> most teams usually put, uh, make their player reps as, uh, for the union in their captain. So, and so that's sort of why people are starting to say Carlo. Yeah, I agree. And yeah, he, and he's his his maturity. Um, even just that I've seen this off season, just even from last year to this year, you can already see it. Like just in his his media presence, uh, the way he's talking about the team, about himself, about you know the younger guys. Like I, I've been noticing Carlo almost feels like he's you know taking that leadership leap himself and you can kind of see it you know, I don't have a you know a specific example in front of me right now but just you know things i've noticed while watching him talk to the media and all that for sure mm -hmm. so yeah and um you know i i think he, the hate for him and on bruins twitter just blows my mind sometimes you know i mean if you're gonna hate anybody i think forbort should be the guy <laughs> forbort i mean, uh, forbort uh, He's a nice guy. 
Nice guy. I do yeah. not want him on my NHL roster right now. I agree. Now. And, uh, you know, they might have to give him the Riley treatment. I mean, we were we were paying Riley, I think, $3 million. Something like that, yeah. Leave. And that's that's right where Forboard is. And people are like, well, you're paying him this money. You'll only save this much if you do this. And, and it's like, we did it before with Riley. We took exactly. that out. So, you know, I, I get it. Things happen, money, you know, this and that. But you got to go with the best roster and, and right. can't be, you know, I don't know what the word is, but can't, you know, just feel like you're obligated to play this guy because of what he's getting for money. Because, like I said, with Riley, technically they should have felt that way. And and one thing about Riley is, I mean, he looked phenomenal when he was down in Providence. So, like, you could right. tell he's an NHL player. He just didn't fit what we were doing, you know, and sometimes that happens for board. I mean, I love him. He, he'll block a shot, but he's just, you know, not as good at hockey as some of the other guys. And if you have a guy like low that is coming in, cruising, helping score goals, put the puck in the back of the net. Um, you know, I, I don't see why you don't let Mitchell and him, take that spot you know maybe mitchell as the seventh i don't really want lorai being the seventh because i want him getting consistent minutes if he's not if he is going to be the seventh i think he should just go down to providence get 25 30 minutes a night and then when you know 20 games in you feel he's ready pull him up you know right that's, yeah that, that's kind of my thought on him um i'm with either or if they want to bring him up and start him right away i'm fine with that but if, if they're not going to give him the minutes, I don't think they should do it. I think they should just, you know. There is also just the possibility that uh, that somehow Zaboral ends up as the uh, as uh, in uh, in like the starting roster. Uh, yeah. Which honestly, at this point, if Zaboral can't crack the roster over Forboard, uh, that's that's an indictment on him. Yeah, I mean, at that point too, I think the Bruins just let him go, let him go at someone else and do his thing because, I mean. How long are you gonna go teeter totter with Zaboral? And you know, right. So that's like at the, this point, just shit or go, shit or get off the pot. I guess. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's how I feel. But uh, I'm, I'm definitely excited. I, I have kind of a hot take that Swayman might have just as good, if not a better year than Olmark this year. Um, you know, that's 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 a hot take that I have. I like both of them. I'm not a hater of either. Uh, I mean, how can you be? But, you uh, can't. You can't. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's my hot take. And I know it's preseason, and you know you work the kinks out. But so far, I think he's looked a little better. He did have a weak five hole goal the other one of the other games he played in. But you know that happens. But I don't think Olmark has looked the greatest, his sharpest so far. So we'll see. I I feel like I feel like Olmark while I was at the game him on Tuesday, it definitely felt like it. It definitely felt like we're not seeing the same all mark as uh, as we did last season season and and part of me feels like that might have something to do with uh, like the injury that he uh, that he had going into the playoffs uh, sure. but uh what is it i know well i've sort of uh, i've sort of been in the uh i've sort of been the resident in uh, johnny beecher or uh, uh, defender on uh, on twitter i've sort of become the uh uh, synonymous with the phrase Beecher 1C. <laughs> I, uh, what is it? That uh, that was something that I was, was like, eh, what do we have to lose uh, if we put him there for like a few uh, games, put him on a scoring line, maybe that it, it solves his scoring and was, uh, but like, I understand that he's probably just going to end up being my emotional support fourth line center. Uh, but my hot take, take is that Merkulov is probably going to to end up uh, with at least 30 points this season in, in the in the pros. I think Merkulov has a, is a pretty good uh, rookie season. I like Merkulov too, yeah. I mean, I think uh, I think he does a lot of things right, you know, small area play, um, that type of stuff that I really like about him. I, went, I actually went to the prospect challenge uh, in Buffalo, a couple oh, nice. weeks ago, a few weeks ago, and uh, just watching him, he didn't have like the greatest, you know, stat sheet games, and he didn't, you know, stand out crazy. But when you really watch him and just, just the things he does in the corners and on the bumper and just little stuff like that, I, I love the way he plays. And of course, he's just 
his attitude. He's so serious. He's, he's all business, you know? So I love that. And a guy, you know, maybe that's the, the Russian in him, <laughs> um, you know, but uh, yeah, that's, I, I, I like him a lot too. And uh, that just brings me again to the point that I'm, I'm excited about the future and the young kids. And I just really hope that Sweeney lets them get some minutes and develop and show us what the hell they got at the, you know, at the pro level. Let them cook. I mean, like the last time that we you know, really saw uh, like a like a decent amount of players come up through the system was like 2016, 17, where we started to see you know, like Carlo, DeBrusque, and and McAvoy come up, yeah, uh, come sure. up, and uh, and it's just, it's always exciting when you see uh, when you get like a new wave of prospects that uh, that ends up uh, coming up and and wowing people. Yeah, for sure, for sure. The only thing I, I uh, complain about, and I'm a, I'm a big card guy, as you can see. You know, I got all my, all my you know, all my cards over here. I'm a big yeah. Tuca collector, of course. But uh, one of the things I hate is in an, all the new releases, they never get the rookies right. It's like, you know, they they got like um, guys that are no longer on the team in the box in the new releases. Like they'll come out, and it's just like, I want to see the rookie cards of like. You know, Lysel, Merck, those type of guys, and I get it; they're still in the AHL, but those are our good prospects. They're throwing. I always see the McLaughlins in there, and I'm not knocking McLaughlin or anything, but um, you know, I see the uh, Jack. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Achan, Achan, Achan. Achan, yeah, Jack Achan. I see his cards. He's not obviously no longer with the organization. Every time I pull an autograph, Achan with a Bruins jersey on, I'm just like, God damn it! Like this should be. <laughs> There should be somebody else. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it's, I can't wait to start seeing those guys' cards come through because I do feel like a lot of them are going to be long-termers here. And that was kind of my point of saying that, um, you know, we haven't had anyone that's been like, this guy's going to be in a Bruins jersey for a while. And, um, you know, that's just kind of one of the things that I'm excited about is that I think a lot of these kids are going to be in Bruins jerseys for a long time. And that's the recipe for success, in my opinion. Right, you want you want a young core that's going to uh, that's going to be there for uh, uh, for a decent while uh, for a decent while. That's why you do. Uh, that's uh, it's why most teams end up doing uh, rebuild uh, rebuilds to have young talent that they uh, to uh, to center uh, to center the future of their team around. Yeah, for sure. No, I agree. Well, I think Buffalo is actually going to be uh, pretty decent this year. No, Buffalo is a team to watch out for. I know Chris is super high on them. Um, Buffalo, I think, honestly, could it could end up making a playoff uh, front. Yeah, that Benson kid looks good, man. He's got five points in the preseason, same as Bedard. Um, yeah. It's crazy because the, these kids, they look so little. Like, now that I'm getting older, I'm like 30. I'm 30 years old now, so I'm like, Jesus Christ, like – I still think I'm young, like and like you know I'm I'm like oh yeah I'm a kid like yeah yeah no but nope not compared to these kids they're, they're coming in, I mean Benson looks like you could catch him at a you know high school party still, yeah <laughs> it's crazy and and that's even more impressive I mean once he gets some size on him uh, well not size but weight you know muscle all that good stuff uh, those pro pro meal plans and workout plans are going to get him right, you know, so he, he's I mean, going to be better than my college meal plan. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. But yeah, no, I, uh, I think they will be a serious contender this year. I don't think they're one to sleep on. And obviously Levi looks like a stud in that. Uh, we'll see if he can keep that up, but I mean, I don't see any reason why he can't. I mean, everything he's shown so far between those few games last year, obviously his mm -hmm. college run, uh, over at Northeastern, um, you know, he looks he looks like he's ready for the uh, prime time for sure. It's funny how much people were hyping up uh, Gopeka Lukonen in, as like the next big uh, goalie in Buffalo, only for it to end up being Devin Levi. <laughs> I know. That's another thing I always see the fucking the UPL cards in my uh, like box breaks and stuff, autographs. And I mean, he'll still have a role, I'm sure, because a lot of teams are switching. It's almost like I hate to cross sports, but in the NFL, a lot of you know people switch to the two running backs now as opposed right, to having yeah. one stud. A lot of you're seeing that a lot in the NHL with goalies too. Mm -hmm. um, 
So, you know, that's that's something to keep an eye on. I mean, I, I still anticipate him getting a lot of games this year. Uh, of course, with Levi being so young as well. So, yeah. Although, uh, although as soon as playoffs hit, they uh, they immediately uh, forego that and just uh, and just ride one goalie until uh, until they cannot do it anymore. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, that's what's tough about our situation. You know, because usually you, you get in the playoffs and it's you know your goalie has to get hot for you to win the cup. And when right. you have two goalies that are so good. It makes you question as soon as a goalie has a bad game. Oh, do you pull him? Because I've seen a goalie have a bad game, bounce back, and go win four in a row. You know, so it's right. Tim Thomas, for example, in in oh, 2011. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure we. He didn't have the greatest game. I don't remember if it was game one. I don't remember exactly. I'd have to you know, go and look. But he he didn't have a great game, and he came back and he played phenomenal. And I've seen the reverse. I've seen goalies start out hot and just fizzle out and, right. you know, end up not being that great. So, you know, it could go either way. Um, one of the things – let me see. I'm just opening this. I got a cool new package today, so I figured I'll open it on the show too. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a good problem to have, but it's tough to manage once you get in the playoffs, that's for sure. Right. It's be- and, like, it's even funnier – uh, that we're talking about this uh, as Bruins fans when we have uh, like such a logjam at uh, at Goya. Like we have uh, we have uh, Omar and Swayman, and then we have Busi, and then we have uh, Kyle and D- uh, Kaiser and DPA Tro. Oh. oh yeah, we got a, our goalie. Yeah. Our goalie scout has got a golden eye, man. Because I'll tell you, when I went to a few Providence games last year, um, or even just you know following them and paying attention to them, I, I was like, yo, this kid. This kid, Bussy, is going to be a stud. And I started right. I wrote a few articles about him. And um, I'm not like, you know, uh, uh, I'm not the greatest when it comes to the prospects. Uh, I've started to be a little better in the, over the last year or so. Uh, I didn't pay attention to him as much, you know, when I was younger. But now that I'm, you know, getting older and more into the team, um, you know, from a, from a, kind of more than a fan perspective but trying to you know analyze and that type of stuff i i was paying attention to that stuff and and uh that kid he's just gonna be i think he's gonna be so good and and i don't know what they're gonna do because you know i know oh mark i think he's here for what two more years at least i think so yeah i I wouldn't imagine them keeping oh mark if uh, obviously bussy develops how we think he's gonna after that two years, I, I would imagine that they're going to roll Swayman, Bussy, and right. it makes you think. You know, I, I hate being the guy. I, you know, trade all Mark because I I don't think you need to. But do you let him go in free agency, or do you get something for this guy? Like, you got to think it like that. I mean, it, it. I mean, it's a it's a tough situation to be in because goalies can look good for a little bit. And then fall off. That's something that can certainly. I mean, example: Jordan Bennington, Carter Hart, um, guys like that. Yeah. That looked like oh, like they're they're gonna be here, and then just what the hell happened to them? So uh, Alex Nedeljkovic also. Nedeljkovic, he looked great. I think he looked great against us um, a few games. I remember just like wow, he was wearing the all black pads, and I specifically remember that. I'm like wow, he looks good. And then right, yeah, he, he kind of. You know, fell off, but um, this was this was one of the cool things in my package. Nineteen eighty, oh, I got a glare there. Nineteen eighty Olympic team. Oh, nice! It's, it's a bonus picture, but what I actually ordered was uh, pretty sweet. It's a whole entire set of the uh, just hockey cards from the Miracle. Miracle that run is, there. That's awesome. Yeah, I got the whole the whole team here. I've been stacking up some stuff. Like I bought a. Uh, Pretty cool. This is an original New York Times article from when they won 1980. That's so sick. Pretty cool. Man. I got uh, an original ticket from the 1980 Hockey Olympics signed by uh, Neil Broughton on the team. So pretty cool stuff. I've been starting to get into that a little more, the USA stuff. One of my biggest though. regrets is uh, – what is it? One of my biggest regrets is like one of the – uh, one of the only uh, hockey uh, packs of hockey cards that I've opened, I had uh, it was like 
two years ago or so, well, I opened, uh, I ended up opening in, in Jack Eichel uh, on the nights, and I did, uh, and and I did, I think I was working the day that uh, the day that he ended up bringing the cup to Chelmsford, uh, and I, uh, and I was like, damn it, I could, uh, damn it, I could have skipped out and work and uh, and slept up to Chelmsford to, uh, to try and get him to sign this. It would have been awesome. Yeah, no, for sure. That would have been awesome. And that's a cool story, just him being from Chelmsford. I mean, I work in Westford, so it's, you know, very close to me. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's sweet that, you know, he was able to win that. I, and I'm, you know, happy for him because he was getting bashed quite a bit for, you know, people thinking that he didn't care and work ethic and this and that. But it's it's good to, you know, I, I obviously didn't, uh, didn't want them to win it. I wanted uh, our guys to win it, but... Yeah, you know it's good that he's at least a Boston kid. And BU, they're going to be. I don't know if you keep up with college hockey at all, but BU is going to be loaded this year. Um, they're stacked out, and I can't wait to keep up with them as well. Uh, unfortunately, Bridgewater er, Bridgewater State doesn't exactly have that great of a, a college hockey program, so I don't really uh, so I <laughs> don't really follow college hockey too much. But uh, but like uh, was it I. Yeah, I like generally root for UMass Amherst because my sister went there yeah. er, during the uh, during the years of Makar and uh, nice. uh, and uh, who else? Uh, Ferrar- uh, Mario Ferraro. You know? yeah. Ferrar- and so uh, uh, and so that's sort of where I uh, when I have my eyes on college hockey, it's usually uh, there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I used to go to a few of those Amherst games because uh, a lot of my friends went to. UMass Amherst, and um, I used to just be up there basically every week. I was up there, and I remember going to tons of those games. And they didn't really have any huge, huge names when um, when I was going to those games because that was probably like 2012, 13. Um, so I don't remember anyone notable, but I mean they've had a good uh, organization. Jonathan Quick, of course, came from there. Multiple Stanley yep. Cup champions. Um, but yeah, I was always have, a BU guy. And they have a uh, what is it? They currently have. Of Ian Low Quality Bruins fan and his son De- Dan's Lock Mellis is this is there. Yeah, Lock Mellis. Yeah, I like that. He's that's a prospect of ours to keep an eye on for sure. Um, yeah. Sometimes you forget about you know those guys. Uh, I like um, I like Trevor Kuntar too. Um, I know he's not from UMass, but recent college. Uh, he all he actually left his third year. Um, didn't finish his senior year, so I'm I'm excited to see him. I think he's going to be. A very good player. Um, I think he's a guy to keep an eye on. I think he's going to be a goal scorer for us in the very near future. Wouldn't be surprised if you see him playing with these guys. Not probably not this year. You know, I would. I wouldn't. I mean, who knows? Obviously, you never know. But I, I do think he's going to be a big part of this team in the in the near future. I could see him getting like a late season call up, like uh, like we did with McLaughlin and back in like 20, 21, 22. Uh, yeah. We're like, yeah, screw it. Why not? Let's throw him in for for a few games, and and then I feel like we're probably gonna see him a little bit, uh, a little bit more in twenty in twenty four, twenty five. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But yeah, I'm excited to see. I know I'm excited to watch tonight. Um, you know, gonna be getting ready here shortly, so we'll we'll wrap it up. And uh, you know, usually we go a little bit longer, but um, you know, I have no issue with cutting it a little short today. So, I mean, I'm definitely glad you joined, bro. I, definitely willing to have you on some more episodes if you want in the future even if you want to hop on with me and chris feel free you know get three or four of us on here some weeks it'll be fun absolutely Uh, you know so we'll we'll do the thing i'll tune into into the den send me a link or or whatever Uh, if you ever want me to you know shoot the shit with you feel free to let me know and i'll I'll, you know see if i'm available myself all right sounds good appreciate you guys for tuning in and uh we'll be back next week See ya.